Hello guys, thank you so much for joining me again. If you're new to the channel, please click subscribe and the notification bell so that you know when I am dropping videos. So there's a bunch coming today and I don't usually do this many, but there's stuff I have to tell you guys. And right now we need to talk about mug rugs. If you want to make something that's super cool from the heart, but fast, I think this is the way to go. So I already have a video showing you how to do this here. I'm one of those people who will make eight lasagnas back to back to back to back until I make it right. Until it feels right, I'm just going to keep doing it. And I wanted to do a few more of these because I do think this is a pretty cool way to start if you are intimidated by doing a full quilt right off the bat and you want to try something new. I think this is a kind of cool place to start, but I didn't really love the instructions. And this one was not a quilt as you go. This one I actually pieced and then put the batting in. I did this one just as I would a quilt except for the binding. And that's really why I ended up making so many more. I didn't love the binding on this. So for this, I attempted to stitch in the ditch. That was a fail. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that, but I did not hit the ditch. But luckily, my thread is black. So when I did not hit the ditch, I hit the black here. And I didn't love, I don't, so people quilt their butts off. And there are some people who are able to put the binding on, roll it over to the back, stitch it down from the front, and it looked beautiful on the back. And that is really not my, it's just not... It's fine, you know, people, it, it's fine, but I don't love it. It's just not my preferred method. And through this project, I really asked myself if I could live with this. And I just, I can't. That's not my method. I'm not going to try this method, probably for very many other things, unless it's absolutely necessary. So this is beautiful. Don't get me wrong. My favorite card um, card trick block here, it's, it's beautiful. It's cool. It's with amazing fabrics. You know, K-Facet is my jam. But I'm just not thrilled with the way that it was bound. And I knew that I wanted to show you guys the quilt as you go method because I figured you'd really like that if you're a beginner and it's it's fast. And when I say fast, I mean fast. Like 45 minutes, like we have mug rugs. 30 minutes, we have mug rugs. But my issue with that is the way that they t <laughs> they tell you to bind it. So for the quilt as you go method, they want you to leave an inch around fabric around the outside of extra fabric and then you fold it once and then you fold it twice and it's supposed to come to a beautiful mitered corner. Not my gift. And I don't know if it's me. It's probably me. I'm sure it's me. But it's not my gift. I'm a beginner. If you're a beginner, you might not like that either. The result of that was stuff like this. This just, this corner is not perfection it's it's not and then you again sew from the front and then it, it catches it now see this is the binding so it's automatically done and then on the back you can see where it was quilted right here if this worked this would be so fast I mean it would be super duper fast I love this particular one I don't love the binding again on this it's not horrible but I don't love it and something else that I don't love is that when you're quilting it on the back you're going to be able to see your quilting. So of course I should have used black thread, which that's my fault, but where you start and stop. So if you started here and stopped right here, they're going to be able to see it and it doesn't get covered up with your, your binding. I love this mug rug. I love the way that the colors came out. I love the choices on this. I just don't love the binding method. That's not my jam. Fine. No worries. I kept going because that's who I am. I think this was the very first one. I think I, I, I think this is the first one that I tried. And I bound this the way that you should bind stuff. I think I did this on the first video. This is the way that you should bind, in my opinion. It's the same way I would do a quilt binding. I cut a two and a half inch strip, maybe a two and a quarter inch strip. You sew it down, you roll it over, and then you hand stitch the back. And then you get some, it's clean. That's That's clean. I like it. It has beautifully mitered corners here. It just, it makes sense to me to do it this way. So, and this is a great pattern to start with. Look at it. Bam. This is not difficult. Even if you didn't have the pre-printed batting by June Taylor, 
you could do this. You could duplicate this. Um, you could draw your own lines and just stay within them and do this yourself again, like 30 minutes, just knock it out. And this one here is when I finally was like, you know what? I wonder, Thermal Web makes a permanent fabric glue. And I've used it to hem my pants and I've washed those pants a ton of times and nothing's happened. If you want it to go even faster and you don't want to hand stitch the back, I glued this sucker and I feel very good about it. I have beautiful um, corners. My corners are cool. They come to the angle that they are supposed to come. They're, they're cool. They look nice. And it's glued down and I don't believe that it's going anywhere. Um, permanent adhesive. I put it on. Try to be careful because a little bit goes a long way. And if you get it on your fabric, it will show uh, it will show shiny. So keep a damp cloth around so that you can just clean up really quickly if it, if it oozes out. But I put a little permanent glue on here. And then after it dries for a while, go back and hit it with the iron and it's done. You talk about super fast, super duper fast. Fabric glue, thermal web. This is definitely one of my favorites. I think these colors are so beautiful. Again, fabric by K Facet. It's a mix of fabrics, um, but I think I need to go get some more of this particular fabric because it's gorgeous. All right, guys, going ahead and get into the video next. Remember that you can always slow it down if you think I'm going too fast or speed it up. I watch 90% of my videos on double time. Like, let's go. What are you telling me? Um, I hope you guys enjoy and I hope you try it. If you do, please let me know. Tag me on Facebook, Instagram. It's all MA Couture Crafting everywhere or you can even go to my website, which I will probably be paying more attention to coming up very soon. But again, if you guys try this, let me know. I think they're so cool. All right, guys, on to the next video. Bye-bye. Okay, let's try this out. That is my favorite mug rug, but I go through this process a few times because it took me a while to get it. So here I am lining up the sides about a quarter of an inch and you'll see little tick marks at the top left at the top right that kind of give you an idea of where to cut it off. So I'm cut down the batting to a quarter inch larger. Now this is where I messed up on this one. That backing fabric should be at least one inch larger all the way around. And as you can see, it's not really an inch larger on the top and the bottom. I cut it to its specifications, but still, no, it's a no-go. And that is where I got screwed up. Other than that, this is a pretty, this is probably the easiest one out of the set. Super fast to piece it. That's not, you know, a big deal. So you just lay down the, um, the first one and then you lay down the other one right sides together this is a solid so you really can't see that it's going to be flipped but you really need to make sure that it's right sides and then just sew a quarter inch do not sew a quarter inch uh, sew what they call a scant quarter inch which is just a little less than a quarter you'll have much greater success and remember whatever you do now is going to be seen on the back so you want to use a thread color that's appropriate for the back because you're going to see it so wherever you stop is what you're going to be able to see i didn't realize that initially that's why this is a journey you know this is my first time doing these so we just kind of learn as we go i really think this is a cool project um a great gift to be able to give away. This is really fast. I kid you not. Like piecing this was quick. So here is a direction, not a directional, uh, a fabric that it has a right side and a wrong side. And you see, I put it down right sides together. And then I'm just sewing down nice and slow. And taking the pins out and flipping it back. Now, this batting comes out already slightly distorted it's not perfect it's just not it's been through a lot it's been tugged on and you're trying not to distort it so you can't iron it while you're using it and that's another reason why I say you need to do a scant quarter inch because you'll see that these pieces start start to not fit see look here I'm like uh oh it doesn't exactly fit perfectly not a big deal it can be forgiving but you know that's why I'm doing it so we know these things 
And so you just smooth it out with your hands and then use this roller press, which is like a little iron, but it's just wood and it rolls your seams. And then here's the last piece. Again, super fast. This didn't take forever. And with this, what it wants you to do is to finish it, you should be able to roll the edges twice. So you roll it once and then roll it twice and it should come to a mitered point at the end. See, so I'm rolling it once. I'm fold, just folding it up one time. Then I thought I'd hit it with the iron to set it. And then you're going to roll the other side. And this is where I was like, uh-oh. Now you can't see I'm off camera, but just trust me, that's not an inch. And I was struggling. I mean, with a capital S. I was like, how am I going to make this come to a minor corner? It's not working. I can't get this 45 degree angle correct. I just could not get it to behave. No matter what I did, I just couldn't make this make sense. You're supposed to be able to fold it once and then fold it twice. And it's all supposed to come together. I got extremely annoyed and decided, okay, I know what to do. We're just going to chop it off. And that's what I did. Chop it off and bind it like a quilt. So I went ahead and took off that quarter inch right there. I didn't need it. It's not like people are measuring how big these are. If you're doing a mug rug, you kind of want it to be at least eight by 10. Once you start getting a little bit bigger, you might as well make a placemat. So I'm one of those people who will keep trying something. I will bake eight lasagnas until I get the right lasagna. I just, I'll keep going until it makes sense to me. Otherwise, it's going to be gnawing at me and I can't live like that. So, yes, I'm that weirdo. But that kind of works out well for projects like these because I will have done it so many times. I can tell you what the barriers are. So I grabbed another one and this is what they look like. They come in that long thing of pre-printed pre batting and it has these little sayings that come with it, which are super cool. You know, um, they're not interchangeable. Each one kind of goes with a specific pattern. They're all different sizes, but they're fun. They have an inspirational one. They have one that's got like cute funky sayings on it. They have one with Bible verses on it. They're cool. You see that batting? That batting is bent up and all the things. Okay. It does not come out perfect. It just doesn't. And that's okay because this can be forgiving if you're not trying to do something that is exact. I do not shoot for exact anymore. I'm over it. Um, I realize that I do not sew exact. I do not quilt exact. But my stuff comes out kind of cool. So whatever. Now make sure that before you put this down, you've got your fabric the right side. I wish that I had realized that I really wanted to turn this. But oh well. <laughs> oh well. And I made sure to make sure that there was more than an inch on each side. I should have turned this the other direction. So now the flowers are kind of facing. Well, it's kind of not directional, but whatever. Not a big deal. This is, again, another one of those super easy patterns in this. There, I think there's seven patterns that come with this. And this was a super duper fast one because this one, all you're doing is sewing straight lines. This is my favorite one. I just didn't get the binding right again. That's okay. We're learning. And I don't think I used the right color thread. I should have used a black thread, but that was a fail. So as you can see, now I'm like, okay, cool. Even though it doesn't fit the way it's supposed to, because I started sewing a little diagonal here, a little diagonal there. You can see that it's not perfectly in the lines, but I'm like, whatever. I'm just going to do an inch around and roll it and it should all take care of itself. Now, the idea is that you roll it up once, roll it up twice. It comes to a mitered corner and then you just sew from the top all the way through the sides. I folded and folded and folded and I was able to get somewhat of a miter but when I tell you this was not cute I was so annoyed because I think the way that these colors and the patterns are laid down are just delicious and it, mm -mm, these corners are not cute and sewing down from the top does not come out cute either it's just not I've just never been able to do it properly trying to stitch in the ditch or top stitching it just doesn't look good so I was like all right I'm gonna try it again there are so many other projects on my to-do list but again I'm a psycho and so I just have to keep going so here I'm not really worried about leaving an inch around I'm over it I know what to do now I, I know it. I've got an idea so you spray that stuff with the basting spray stick it down and that basting spray works so good I mean it's just stuck on there 
So I take this little guy here and I realized that it doesn't even fit perfectly. I'm like, dude, you guys are setting me up to fail right off the bat, but that's okay. It'll work itself out. So let's do it again. You start laying down your pieces and these are all numbered. So they're telling you what fabric to put where, where to start. So that was number one. And as you fold it over, you can see the top and the bottom of that piece do not fit perfectly in that rectangle. And then I checked the numbers like, did I, did I do this right? Yeah, I cut it right. It just does not fit perfectly. Setting me up to fail. See, see how they do? I think I even changed the, the thread at this point, my bobbin thread, like, oh, okay, it needs to be darker. This one came out much better. So I just work my way around. I put the pin in. I don't put the pin in all the way through, just a little bit through the batting. Then I sew it, flip it back, roll it. You do not necessarily have to have one of those wooden pressing things. You can really do that with your finger press, with your finger. Just press it with your finger. And we just keep building around. You're going to stitch and flip, stitch and flip, which is kind of the premise behind foundation paper piecing. Now watch, you're going to see that I wasn't paying the closest of attention. And all of a sudden my strips start to veer down to the right. I did not keep them lined up perfectly. I was too busy lining them up with each other instead of paying attention to the batting and where I was placing it. Those blue strips are not sewing lines. They are placement lines. So you see how that fabric that I just put down is starting to scoot down into the right a little bit. I wasn't paying attention and now it just it went all the way down. Look at that. This pattern is not so that that's going to be a big issue. If I had been working with some diagonals and some stars, I probably could have run into an issue there. So here I just trim it off all the way. I just trim it off and square it up. I don't care that I'm taking off a little bit here and there. Not a big deal. I've got to take off all that batting. Not a big deal. Just squaring it up. Not checking to make sure that it's an 8 by 10. I'm just squaring it up using the lines on my ruler and the lines on my mat. And this one here, I took off quite a bit. Not a big deal. This is, again, one of the more forgiving of the patterns. Boy, I like that. I just love the colors. K-Fab, oh, I think I need to buy some more of this fabric. Now, do I have a project for it? No, but I just think it's so pretty. Now I'm cutting a two and a half inch strip because I'm about to bind this sucker like you bind a quilt and we're going to move on and that is going to be our method and we're going to be okay with that. So in order to do that, you take your two and a half inch strip, you fold it in half. Should I be ironing on this mat? Absolutely not, but I'm doing it for you guys. Take off that little piece of um, excess there. We don't need that salvage. Fold it down at a 45 degree angle. Press it again. If you'd like, you can cut like a quarter inch right there, which is what you should do to decrease bulk, but whatever. And then just fold it back down. And now you're going to lay it down on that quilt. And it's going to create a little pocket. I am going to mark a quarter of an inch from the bottom. I usually do this by eye, but because I'm showing you guys what I'm doing here, I'm going to actually mark it. Now, if this is going too fast, remember that you can always hit your settings menu and hit slow down. Always remember you can watch me super fast or you can slow me down. I do that a lot of the time. I usually watch most people on double time. So I'm going to stop right here at that edge. I'm going to turn my quilt at a diagonal angle and I'm going to sew straight off. And I'm going to show you what that looks like here. See, I just sewed straight down and then at a diagonal angle. Now we're going to take this strip. We're going to push it up so that it's parallel. And then we're going to push it right back down so that the raw edges are together. So I'm pushing it up. Diagonal 45 and pull it right back down. Raw edges to raw edges. Raw would be that cut side. The fold is on the left where my left hand is. The open side is on the right where my right hand is. That's the raw side. And then we're going to just sew right back down. I'm going to put something behind it because otherwise my foot has got to try to jump up the quilt. And we don't want that. We want to be able to just sew straight down. And we're just going to sew down and we're going to stop a quarter of an inch again on this side. 
This is how you bind a quilt. This is just a tiny quilt, a little bitty baby, a mini quilt called a mug rug. You do the same thing on a huge quilt. Stop a quarter of an inch. I am going to lift my presser foot diagonal. My needle is down. My needle does not come up. I have a needle down function on this sewing machine. So when I stop, my needle stops in the down position all the time. So we just do it again. We're going to put something behind there and we're going to just sew down. That's just some scrap fabric that I have, some batting, just so that it doesn't have to jump up on my quilt. And we're going to sew down and we're going to do it again. Here you'll be able to see the mark probably a little bit better. I'm using a chalk pencil by Sew Line. And apparently knocking the camera all around. And we're going to sew and we're going to stop with the needle down right there on that line, diagonal, sew off. So you're going to do that for all your corners and we should be coming up on, oh, maybe not, just kidding. I guess I really wanted to show you this. This is kind of where people get stuck on doing quilts. I actually don't mind this part of the binding process. It's after this that I get annoyed, but whatever, no worries. I'm going to show you a trick for that too. So one last time, we are going to mark a quarter of an inch there. Sew down. That needle is going to stop in the down position. You're going to rotate to the diagonal and sew off. All right, last corner. Here we go. We come around the mountain. Same thing. However, is this not the end? Come on, it must be. This is where we started, right? Please tell me this is where we started. Yes, because I usually start at the bottom right for whatever reason. I do that on my big quilts too. I always start at the bottom, the, usually like the bottom right. And you're going to back tack here because you're going to be playing with it a little bit. Now you can see I didn't sew all the way down. I just sewed just a little bit. Now we've got to make a little triangle to tuck that into the, the little pocket that we made. So if the pocket stops right there, we're going to cut our diagonal to right there. Bam. I didn't measure it really. I just made sure that this will lay flat with that little tip down in there. And then I just push it down and it lays flat. I just cut it at a diagonal angle going toward the right and now it's laying flat, right? Now we're gonna take our sewing machine and we're gonna pick up where we left off and just sew straight down to meet where we started. So just sew right over it. I know it's kind of hard to see because of the colors, they all match, but I just sewed straight down. And then I do a little back stitch right there. And there we are, nice and easy. Now, I'm gonna iron this little guy. We're gonna pull this all around and you'll have nice corners because this is the same way that you do a quilt. It just works. We don't have a big issue here. And then I'm just gonna iron it just to kind of train it to go in the direction that we want it to. Iron it, iron it, iron it. Then we're gonna flip it over. And I have decided, oh, that's right. There's this little piece right here that is, does not close completely. So you're going to just use a little fabric permanent glue right here and just hold it for a few seconds and it will hold. You want to try to be kind of neat because it will shine where it comes out. And then I decided, you know what? This is permanent. I've used this to hem some pants. This is just a mug rug and my, my pants have stayed. So I decided, what? I'm not going to sew this down in the back. I'm going to glue it. And you know what? It worked. And it was super fast. I can do probably about seven or eight of these and probably probably about three or four hours like these can be knocked out so quickly and I know that this is pre-printed batting and you might want to get the kit but you can do the same thing with some batting yourself 
and just draw some lines on it or make up your own little pattern. Just put some fabric on the back, spray it down and go and just start sewing like the Dickens. And you guys can have these so quickly. They're such a cool gift. I personally like eating on them when I have a cupcake, a bagel, a donut, some coffee in the morning, some tea at night. They're just cute. They're pretty. And if you're having people over, it's just a little something. You know, you might not want to give them a coaster. You might want to give them a little mug rug. They're just cute. They're little bitty quilts. And again, if you're intimidated by doing a large quilt initially, this is a great place to start. So the way you do these edges is they kind they come together. You just fold one side down and then fold the other one at a diagonal and they will come together at a 90 degree angle. You kind of play with it and force your force it a little bit. But these edges look so much better than all the other ways that they have us trying to do this. Although June Taylor has some lovely pre pinned batting designs. The directions are not the best, especially when it comes to finishing, which would be your binding. She'll just tell you finish it. <laughs> like, you just tell somebody finish it. Take a two and a half inch strip and sew it all around and finish it. Like what? Wait, I need more. So I know you really can't see too clearly what it is that I'm doing. But at the end of the day, I promise you, if you play with this, just try it. You will see them come together on the sides. And then I let it dry and then I hit it with that iron and bam, this is my favorite. This is the method that I'm going to be using. You can wash this several times and it will not come apart. That glue is permanent. Oh, that's some ugly binding there. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.